Hi, my name is Thomas Kim. In this session of video, we learn bisection method and Newton's method to find to compute square root in C++ code. While re reading this book, C++ template, the complete guide. While reading this book and also reading this book. Both book use bisection method, bisection method to find the square root. To find the square root. Square root. Uh, in my case, I, I learned bisection method and Newton's method long ago, about 30 years ago. I used this book. This was my first book in my college. And in this book, I I remember I first learned Newton's method. Newton's method. In case of bisection method, I learned later in sophomore, sophomore a senior class. When I study numeric numerical analysis, I learned bisection method. But these methods are actually uh, one of the most fundamental numerical methods. So please try to remember these methods. And I will try to explain as as clearly as possible. In case of bisection method, it is something like this. We are going to solve, for example, we are going to solve x square equals k. We are going to find the square root of k where x is greater than 0. Uh, we will define, we will limit the range x should be greater than 0. In such case, if we put it on left hand side, it becomes x square minus k equals 0. So we let fx x0. We, we let fx like this. So we are solving this problem to find the square root of x using bisection method. So I will, I will graph this, this function on coordinate on Cartesian coordinate like this. This is k, square root k will be here. We are going to find this value. And initially we start with lower bound. I will let lower bound a here, for example. And upper bound b. We will let it k, for example. We will start with the two lanes, lower bound and upper bound. Then we will try to compute this square root k. This is fx, fx, x square minus k, like this. Okay, how are we going to find it? The first step, the first, the first step we will compute x like this 2a plus b so a lower bound upper bound and the mean of upper bound and lower bound lower bound and upper bound then we can i will let it x1 x1 can be either here x1 can be either here or here okay if x1 is on the on the right hand side of k, square root k, then fx will be here. F x1 is here. So in this case, fx1, this is x1, fx1 is greater than greater than zero. If fx1 greater than 0, fx1 is greater than 0, x1 is on the right hand side of k, x1 is on the right hand side of root k. So we are moving b, b closer to this way, okay? So if fx, f over x1 is greater than 0, it is greater than 0, greater than 0 means fx1 is on the right hand side of k1, so we move, we shrink, we move xb to closer to k, root k, 
So we have to say B equals X1. Okay, you have to remember, you have to understand this one. Otherwise, if X1 is less than 0, for example, if X1 is here on the left hand side of K, then, F, then F1 is here, Fx1 is here. So Fx1 is below 0, so less than 0. Then we have to move lower bound, lower bound A to right hand side. So we have to say A equals X1, like this. So we are shrinking the range. We are shrinking the range. At initially, it's, we are shrinking the range like this, okay? So otherwise, if x1 equals 0, then we found k. If this, it means this, okay? In this condition, we found, we found x equals root to k. So this is success. So what you have to remember is this one. This equation and this condition. So this condition you have to remember. Then we repeat this process until we find we until we find we find f f over x1 equals to zero. Then we found the solution. This is bisection method. So I will I will move it to into C plus plus code. I, I I will leave it here. I will make a code here. So double the function name will be bisection. I will say bi bisection method bi double a double a double b and we will have function pointer fptr fptr will be function pointer. Okay, then here we first compute this this well we before we compute we will let epsilon like this double EP small small double number EP epsilon we will use the epsilon as zero EP EP EP, okay, because computer is not exact about com about computation. Then we compute. Then we will do. do we need to have this. We'll say double x fx. We declare two more variables like this. Now two. We have. We are using two loop here. X two A plus B we compute. Then Fx we use function PTR F PTR X like this. Okay? So we are computing this if Fx Fx greater than it will be EP greater than EP then B equals X as as means as means this condition as A equals X okay now we close door loop here Y here we are testing this condition. If f x we will say absolute value uh, greater than EP. If if absolute value of f this f fx, this is fx is greater than EP, then we have to loop it again. At this point, at this point, return 
x x this is bisection method now I will explain Newton's method so basically you have to remember this equation this this one EP 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 you have to remember the mean means success okay it means success you have to remember one two three steps so in C++ code it becomes like this now I will explain Newton's method in case of Newton's method we need a little bit a little basic knowledge about a background knowledge of calculus so if we are given function fx the same way x square minus k for example if we are given graph like this if we draw this graph I will draw any graph like this okay so for example if x is here x1 for example then fx the tangent line the tangent lines theta set the tangent lines set at this point tangent theta equals f prime x you have to remember this equation first you have to remember derivative of x1 is the tangent theta the tangent theta of tangent line okay you have to remember this one now I, I will explain more about Newton's method in detail here for example we are solving this equation okay so initial value would be like this here I will let x1 okay then f x1 you understand this right now we make a tangent line here at this point then we make tangent line like this then it makes setup angle setup we want to find this point and we label it x2 for example we want to find this point the solution will be this this one this is the solution root k okay in this case we want to find this value so as i explained here this theta this theta tangent theta will be F, f prime of x1 so this tangent theta f prime x1 x prime x1 at this point tangent theta okay means delta x x over delta y you understand delta x delta y over delta x you have to understand this this tangent theta tangent theta is uh, f prime x1 x1 here and tangent theta means delta x uh, delta y delta y over delta x so here delta x means x1 minus x2 okay x1 because x1 is greater than x2 minus x2 okay over this value is fx1 
at x1. We have to follow this way. So we will drop this, this part. We dropped this part. Now we have f prime x1 equals x1 minus x2 f x1 like this. Okay? Now I will change 1 into n 1 into n to n plus 1 like this. I will change like this. Okay? So it becomes f xn xn minus xn plus 1 f xn if we arrange this equation if we arrange this equation it it becomes like this xn plus 1 equals x1 minus f prime xn over f xn it becomes like this. This is Newton's method. So after we first find the fx2 using this equation, we apply this equation, we apply this equation once again. Say now we use this this is x2, f x2 like this. Okay, then here we draw tangent line again, tangent set again, then it becomes x3, set up, see, this, this becomes x2 prime, x2 prime, here, that, Delta y over delta x. Now this becomes x2 minus x3. Here, f x2, f x2. This becomes new delta y. Okay, new delta y. This becomes this becomes new delta x. So it holds. So if we rearrange this, it becomes like this actually. So x1, x2 x3, x4, it is approaching, converging to k, root kx, root k. This is Newton's method. Okay, I will explain it in another way. In algebraically, I will explain it. So please remember this graph, okay? I will explain it algebraically. Another way to explain is something like this. F prime F prime X This is the definition of derivative. Okay? So if we drop it, we drop this we can say approximate. We can say approximate. Right? So now we say f prime x1 approximately x1 minus x2. This delta x here. F, F x1 minus f x2 okay that delta it means delta f delta y over delta x okay approximately approximately we believe we believe this is zero please remember the graph the graph here okay Please remember, this is we x2, like this. And we believe, in fact, this is fx2. Right? But we believe this is zero, because it is very close. So we believe, we make, we make believe this term is zero.
then if we rearrange it, it actually becomes like this. So this is Newton's method. Now we understand this equation. Now we understand this is Newton's method. The problem is how 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 are we going to compute this? Say f prime x n. Please remember the equation, the graph. Please remember the graph. This is x one. This is x two. Okay. This is square root, the root we want. So in this case, if this is EP, EP, this is X1, FX1, F prime X1, this is X1. So X1, if X1 is X1, X2 equals X1 minus EP x1 minus ep okay you have to remember this so fx prime x1 is approximately delta x over delta y over delta x it means x1 minus x2 x1 minus x2 x1 minus x2 f x1 minus f x2 okay then the difference x1 minus x2 is ep so we have ep here here f x1 minus f f x2 is x1 minus ep x1 minus ep so this is x prime x1 okay so if we put it like this like this so here In this, I will write this equation once again. X n plus one equals X n minus X prime X n over F X n. Here, F prime X n equals with E p over F x n minus f x n minus e p now we are making complete c plus plus code double newton value newton And initial value and function pointer. I will say FPTR. Now here double EP some number small number like this. Then we need double fx fp. We we denote it will be fp like this. While here we compute fx equals fptr. X like this 
And that's all of the value. Less than a uh, greater than EP. Greater than EP then here. Here we compute we compute the FP. This equation FPTR. We already computed FPTR here. So it becomes fx already computed. This part is already computed. We compute this fptr x minus ep over ep. We compute fptr uh, this derivative. Then we compute this equation again. The previous one, F P, this F P, right? F X. No. Because we already computed here. Then we loop. Then here, close, close this block, return, x. This is Newton's method. Now, I will move to my desktop and I will implement this all in C++ code. We will implement by section method first. Include IO stream. Then we need uh, limits. Also, we need CMS. We will return double by section. We will use it A, B. Then we say double FPTR double. This is function pointer. First constant EXPR double EP. EP means epsilon times SCE numeric limits double. Epsilon Yeah, we we declare uh, X and F Here to We compute a plus B Uh, we'll change it. Okay, I will. I will do this. Then we compute FPTR. I would say just to say function. Mm, I would say F. Okay, FX. F uh, X. We compute the FX. Then if uh, FX greater than EP P equals X means it means root is on the right side. Uh, x is x is on the right side of root okay so we move move upper bound 
B else A equals A equals X X is on the left side of root move lower bound A okay so you have to understand this here while uh, fx greater than ep it should be fabs absolute value of fx then return x we will test it here uh std double uh root equals mm, also f equals um we are using lambda function For example, line, line, we are computing square root of nine. Mm. Bisection. Bisection. Zero, initial value zero. Mm, we can say 9 F now print result std c out square square root over 9 R std and there save it Newton Okay, now if we change it to four, it works. No, no, it should be. No, it should be four. Okay, say we we can change it like this double uh, k equals four here uh, k k like this and then it can be here we have to change this we cannot do it like this auto no auto is uh, Auto is supported in Genius C++. You can change like this. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. See? 
auto. Thirty three. Mm, we have to say uh, double. Mm, okay. Extended comma or before auto. Hmm? Okay, it works. So if we change it to uh, 25, we change it to 25, make it K, then N. Okay? See. Okay. Now, if we want to, if we want to evaluate the cubic root, for example, cubic root, we can simply change like this, cubic root. Okay, we change the equation like this. Now, it becomes cubic root. So, I will make it F1, F1. R1. I will demonstrate how to make a cubic root. Okay, this is cubic root, a square root. If we want a cubic root, we can change like this. Two. This is cubic root. Here. This is for cubic lot. Okay. I'll change. I'll say K one. K2, 27, and this should be K1, and this should be K1, this should be K2, this should be K2, K1, K2, F2, K1, K2, R2, OK. See, square root of 25, 7, cubic root of 27, 3. OK, it works. So this is bisection method. Please note that this is not supported in uh, Microsoft C++. See, if we compile it Microsoft C++, EHSC, <laughs> STD, STD, C++17, FE, EXE, Newton, C++. See, it doesn't work because of auto. Because of auto, in case of Visual C++ 2017, it doesn't work. And here, and if we want to make it work with the Visual C++, we then have to introduce functional. I will make it more compatible, functional, like this. And we have to change it, STD. 
uh, functional function function then return value would be double and it gets double then we can then it works like this then it works okay see visual visual c plus plus also work so next we move to this is bisection method oh i named it i will i create another file bisect bisection cpp and here i copied all bisection saved and i close it now newton's method this is newton's method say newton in case of newton's method we will have double x this is the initial value and it will be the same it will be the same it will be the same here we need double fx fp fp for derivative why fx uh, we compute f x we first compute the fx like this okay we compute the fx then we make it to absolute value fabs if it is greater than ep then we compute otherwise we already have solutions so fp derivative Uh, here we say fx fx minus uh, f x minus ep ep then we compute x fx fp see it's simple now we return x I will make it this epsilon a little bit bigger for example 5 now we are trying uh, Newton method here the same this is Newton method Newton and we will use initial value 1 for example we don't we don't need this we will just use k k1 here k2 return okay. save them now try this this is newton method i will say Newton method this is bisection method So we are testing Newton method now.
Newton mess. Oh, there's some problem. Let's see. Yeah, let's try uh, some other number, initial value. For example, 1. 1. In say initial value is important in case of Newton's method. Okay, it works. In case of Newton's method, initial value is pretty important. Also, now let's try bisectional method. Bisection method. Okay, bisection method. So, in this session of video, we learned about the bisection method, Newton's method, and bisection method. How how they are different, and how they how to implement them. Uh, lastly, I will show you another thing. In the book, I mentioned they are using uh, integer bisection bisect int cpp bisectional method using integer okay say in this case i will copy it uh, in case of they are using integer we have to change a little bit if we are going to modify to integer type we have to make some changes here int and uh, we will not the I will not use it. I will instead like this int a. We will initialize with the zero like this, and also int. I am making some changes int. The algorithm act is actually the same, but uh, there's uh, some minor difference, and we don't need it. And it should be INT, of course. And this is the same. And here, we don't have if it should be like zero. Okay. And here, 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 here. And we also have to change it, change it here. How? Uh, like this. FX equals zero or uh, a plus one lower bound okay lower bound plus one equals upper bound it means it's done computation is done this state means computation is we we successfully evaluated the computation scale root so if we want to continue the loop we have to do like this okay so we have to change like this And it should be not double int. And it should be int. Yeah. Int. 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 It should also be just one. Like this. Mm, everything sh seems to be fixed. Now let's try it. Okay, it works. Uh, bisection method with integers. This is inti if we are doing integer bisection method using integer, we have to fix like this. Or if it it looks very ugly, you can say you can do like this. If it looks ugly, either either here or here, we can put if. For example, if uh, fx equals zero or a lower
Lower bound. Lower bound. Greater than B. It means we can say break. Okay? Or we can just say true. You can just fix like this. So the result is actually the same. See? The same. Result is the same. So we in this session we learned Newton's method and bisection method and bisection method using integer. Newton's method is actually very important. This, uh, this method is one of the most uh, fundamental or uh, basic method for root finding. And I hope you understand my explanation. Please watch my video uh, about when I explain my th the theory, theory behind these algorithms. Understanding the algorithm, the theory is more import important to actually implementing this code. You can, if you understand the theory, you can always implement such algorithm. Thank you for watching.